has this very scary title. Um, actually, I want to advertise my um, latest, uh, latest development, but unfortunately, I wasn't allowed to do that here. So I had to change uh, slightly. Oh, by the way, this doesn't really fit. Okay. Um, that shouldn't be a problem. Um, so instead, I will talk about what, uh, in my opinion, is wrong with current vector graphics editors. Uh, first of all, Inkscape. So there are a lot of Inkscape developers here. Uh, sorry for that, but it's just not the way I wanted uh, to work. So it's very subjective. Uh, and I also want to give some hints on how I think we can improve that. And maybe in the end we see that uh, we better start off uh, from scratch. Because Inkscape works the way it works, and that's fine for many people, but maybe some other people want to do it differently, and so, yeah, maybe that's, it's, it's good to have an alternative. So let's uh, look at how Inkscape works. Um, so first of all, this is the perspective of a non, not very expert, uh, expert uh, Inkscape user, so I use it occasionally, but I'm sure there are better ways, but uh, I think this kind of says how the, um, the, the average user uses it. So for example, you want to um, make a pattern of, um, of shapes, like uh, shown here. So you draw the shape, uh, you edit the shape, you add some color, then you duplicate it, and then you select all your shapes and you arrange it using the arranging tool, um, as you see here. And this kind of works. But um, it has some disadvantages. Um, first of all, what happens if you, for example, want to um, replace the original shape? So if you want to replace this uh, fancy rectangle with, say, an ellipse, um, you have to start over again from, from, uh, from beginning. You have to draw the shape, the ellipse, you have to um, edit its color, you have to duplicate it, you have to select all the duplicates, and you have to arrange it. Um, or if you want to change the arrangement, so if you just want to change the spacing, as shown here, you have to select all the shapes and um, arrange it again. So everything you did before was lost, or is lost. Um, another disadvantage is that many objects clutter the object tree. So I know that the object tree isn't very often used uh, in, in the Inkscape world because it doesn't really work well, I have the impression. Um, but if you are used to work with an object tree, that's really a major drawback um, because if you have, okay, if you have four clones, then it <coughs> isn't really that, a, that, that much of a problem. But if you have hundreds or thousands of clones, then you can imagine this doesn't really scale. Uh, one good thing I really like about it is that you cannot just copy-paste items, but you can actually clone them. So if you, for example, as I did here, um, draw the, um, the points of, of a shape, then all the clones are also affected. Uh, affected. Um, yeah, but unfortunately this doesn't work if you exchange the whole shape. So what can we do better? I propose that uh, we don't use um, a cloning tool, or a duplicate, or a range and pattern tool, as we have in Inkscape, but instead an object, a cloner object. And how it works is that you can interact with it very, in a very non-linear fashion. So you draw the shape, you edit the shape and color as before, but then you don't duplicate it, but you instead um, create a cloner object, and put this um, shape you, you, have, you, you just have drawn into this cloner object and the cloner takes the full responsibility of all the clones. So no matter how many clones you have, you just have uh, two objects. And later on, so you, you edit your scene and you, you go on, and later on you can simply go back to your cloner object and manipulate um, whatever properties you want, for example the spacing, um, and it gets updated. So the um, actual um, semantics that you not have only duplicates which are by coincidence arranged in some certain pattern is not lost, but it's inherently stored in the cloner object. And this is how it could look in practice. So as you see here, you only have a cloner object and this is a um, rectangle. And the way this is implemented is with a um, child-parent relationship. You anyways have the object tree, so everything which is a child of the cloner um, becomes cloned. Then yeah, you have these, um, these properties, for example, um, where you can 
set the count uh, four times three uh, crit. You could, for example, also clone them in a linear fashion, just like uh, you can do with the, with the arrange and pattern tool in game uh, in Inkscape. Yeah, and I think in a nutshell, this um, paradigm can be called object oriented. So everything is an object rather than you have many tools like you currently have in Inkscape. And all the negative things I just mentioned um, now turns into positive things because you can easily replace and modify the template object. You can just drag it out of the um, object tree and drag another object in, an ellipse, much more complicated object, a group of object, whatsoever. Um, you can edit the arrangement properties anytime, so even after saving, um, storing and um, loading the um, scene again, you can easily um, manipulate that. And you only have to handle two objects rather than n copies. And I propose not only to have one single generator object, but a whole palette of um, generator objects. We have just seen the cloner object, but for example, there's also a mirror object. I'm sure you can all imagine what this mirror object does. Um, many of the uh, real world shapes are actually uh, symmetric in some, some fashion. And also an instance, which is the cloner from Inkscape, basically. So um, if you have not copy pasted, but if you change it, it uh, the, the, the um, clone also changes. And one very important point here is that you not only can nest these generators, but you can also, uh, you are encouraged to do so. And this allows you to um, generate very complicated shapes with very few objects, which are very handleable, very maintainable. And you always have this nice overview in the object tree, so you directly see with one glimpse that uh, the mirror is a children of, or is a, is a child of the cloner, and is actually made up uh, by a part. So for example, for this, um, for this nice drawing here, which took me about uh, two minutes to, to, um, to do, we only need three points. And everything is, um, is editable and reachable within a second. So this idea is not new. Um, in programming, we have these paradigms. Um, we have functions, we have loops, we have recursion, and we have variables, and a lot of other uh, things. Um, which we can use to, uh, to structure our code and to reuse our code. And we have a plethora of paradigms. Um, most importantly, we have object orientation, which is also implemented here. And we have procedural um, programming, but we also have functional programming. Um, yeah, we, we have so many paradigms, I don't want to, to um, list them all. And much more important, we have um, positive and negative principles. So I only listed the most important positive principles or patterns, um, this is don't repeat yourself, try. So we don't want to copy paste code because if we want to change or want to fix bugs in one of these uh, code blocks, then we also have to do the same thing in another block. So rather we put it into a function and just uh, call the function at two different points. And the KISS principle, keep it simple, stupid. So uh, simple things are better than more complicated things. But we also have anti-patterns like uh, spaghetti code and um, copy-paste um, coding, which we try to avoid and which currently I have the impression that for um, designers and um, for people who use Inkscape or GIMP, this doesn't really count. So copy-paste is, yeah, do it. Um, that's, that's not really an, an alternative to that and the alternatives are not encouraged enough. So, yeah, people use it and then in the end they um, get angry because um, they have a scene which is unmaintainable. Um, this is also true for LaTeX and Tifts. You can also have macros and variables, so I'm, I really like these, um, these tools, but uh, unfortunately you don't have uh, immediate visual feedback, so this is also difficult for many people to use, including me, so yeah. I use it for some things, but for others it's, it's just uh, too much overhead. And in 3D modeling and animation, this is really common. So, I don't know any 3D program where you don't uh, do things like that. So, is it uh, Blender? Uh, it's quite well hidden in Blender, but uh, in Cinema 4D, for example, it's very obvious. And this is actually also um, where the um, the um, motivation to um, to start this project came from. Yeah, I just want to mention Houdini. It's not open source, unfortunately, but it's uh, completely procedural. So you see in 3D. Um, modeling and in 3D animation, 
there are many, many of these paradigms and many uh, ways to interact with that, but unfortunately, uh, it's not implemented in Inkscape, but it's also not implemented in Illustrator, it's not implemented in Coral Draw, as far as I know, so, um, yeah, why is there no 2D, what you see is what you get editor, which is object-oriented, which is somehow structured, or which is uh, dry, uh, don't repeat yourself. Uh, I have a few ideas, maybe it's too complicated for artists, so they are used to do that, and yeah, it works, so yes. <laughs> why should we do something else? And I think for many use cases this is true. As um, object-oriented programming is not the way to go for every programming task, there's, uh, why not use C for very simple or maybe even for more complicated things like Darktable. Um, so this works and people who are used to it and who like this, uh, yeah, they, they can continue to do that. But um, it works for 3D. So why do 3D artists uh, can do this or want to do this, but 2D artists don't do, uh, want to do that? And I think this is because uh, 3D is inherently more complicated. So, um, yeah, there's, there's more, like they, um, they want, uh, how to express that? Um, so for them, it's not, not such a big step to get into more abstraction and because they, they do that anyways. And many programmers I know, um, they don't want to deal with these problems. They use what you um, see is what you mean instead. So they use LaTeX and Tics and Matplotlib or program their figures um, directly in Python and Matplotlib. Um, of course, they, they also don't suffer from these problems. Um, so who is left who could use some of these paradigms? Um, yeah, first of all, it's me. Um, because I want to do this, I really, uh, I'm really bothered with uh, how things work currently. I don't want to, um, to work that way. I don't like it. Um, but also those who like abstraction and are somehow accustomed to 3D or um, programming and who want to have immediate uh, visual feedback. So they cannot use ticks because they have to compile their, um, their document every time they do a change. And it's also for those people who want to sustain uh, who don't want to sustain a duplication and unstructured uh, scenes and documents. And one thing Alex pointed out, uh, I'm not sure if he's here, he promised to be here. Ah, he's there, yeah, great. Hi. Is uh, that this is great for uh, animation. And this is something I will um, talk later about very briefly, but um, I think he's right. So this is, um, if you do animation, uh, if you don't do animation, if you just do a still scene, then it kind of works. So what you have is, is what you see, and you can export it to PNG. No one cares about the structure anymore. It's, everything is a pixel, and yeah, it's fine. But if you have uh, animations or interactions, then um, the relationships and the structure of the um, of the objects becomes very important because if you yeah if you do an animation, then um, and, and the arm suddenly is, is another place as, as the body, then. <laughs> things become uh, creepy. Okay, so let me talk briefly about my development, and sorry Ali, I promise not to do this, but uh, I think I have a few more minutes. <laughs> six minutes. Yeah. Um, so I started this about six months ago, so the uh, concept is already about four years old, so since four years this topic is really bothering me, um, but this implementation is only six months old. Um, I estimated about 1,000 1, hours of work and 800 commits and 40,000 40, lines of code, just to get you an impression of the, uh, of the size of the project. And what does it do? Uh, it implements basically all these things I just mentioned. Um, it is object-oriented, it is structured, it is non-destructive, and uh, you can interact with it in a non-linear fashion. Um, and it also implements... Or it, the, the first principle I try to stick to is user friendliness. So um, it tries to give a very low uh, entrance burden, so you can just start and, uh, and do nice things with it. And if I want to summarize it within just one sentence, I would say um, you can, well, it's, it's entirely 2D, so um, you cannot do any 3D things with it but it tries to resemble the 3D workflow. So if you are accustomed to um, a 3D 
modeling uh, suite like uh, Blender or Cinema 4D or Maya or 3D S Max. Um, this might really, um, you might really like this. Um, one other principle is, so we stick to these many principles and paradigms, um, but we don't want to sacrifice usability. Five minutes. Um, we don't want to sacrifice usability. So this is, um, we, we don't um, force people to do this, but we encourage people to do this. So if you want, if you have this cloner, which uh, clones this tip around um, the shape, you can simply press uh, C or convert, and you have these uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, um, yeah, six, um, six tips, and you can track them around manually. Uh, of course, you shouldn't do this, because then you lose all the nice properties, but you could if you want. Um, another principle is transparency. I don't mean uh, alpha channel. I mean that the program works in the way the user expects it, and the user always sees what happens. Um, one big, um, one big uh, reason or one big um, thing which uh, implements this is the object tree. So the object tree always gives you the topological structure and uh, tells you what what your scene is is looking like. Uh, then we have all the standard things of um, vector graphic programs like uh, rectangles, ellipse lines, procedural paths, uh, uh, generators I just talked about, including outlines and text. And we have an image object which allows you to include um, a pixel graphics, an SVG or PDF graphics uh, as one object, so you cannot actually edit it, but um, you can use it. Um, we have Bezier curves, we have some tools. I really want to um, keep the number of tools low because most of the things should be expressed by objects, but it's, it's not possible without tools, unfortunately. And one thing I'm, uh, I find really interesting is um, it's scriptable. So you can op use all the properties you see here, so um, for example the mode, count, path, uh, start and endpoint, and um, script is using embedded Python. Um, this is also huge uh, stuff. <coughs> Uh, towards animation and we have simultaneous editing so whenever two properties are shared by uh, two objects so for example if you select two ellipses um, both ellipses have the radius property then you can edit this um, radius property uh, for all the ellipses at once so this is I think also a very huge step towards suitability and this is not limited to two objects but uh, you can have uh, any number of objects and we have a flexible GUI with drag and drop dockable widgets, and we can extend uh, we can extend objects using text. And you might also notice from uh, from other programs. So, for example, here we have a path, and each of these uh, tips have a, a path tag. Um, so it is constrained to that path, and you can just say, I want it at 50% or at 100% or whatever. And we have access, exhaustive undo redo, we have uh, customized uh, key bindings, uh, we have internationalization, we can load and save to JSON. Uh, this is more or less arbitrary, we could also use some XML or binary thing, but I found for debugging JSON is great. Mm -hmm. And we can export the pixel SVG and soonish to uh, PDF. Um, for the future, uh, I want to implement more generators, shapes and some more tools, not many. Um, uh, as I said, one big point is uh, animation. So for motion graphics, this, I think this will be the killer application. Um, also, I want to add some modifiers, um, for example, to add some random to, to the cloner, um, or to bend or bevel paths and edges. Um, I would like to improve the styles. I haven't talked about this, unfortunately, now, but the uh, styling system is also very interesting. Um, if you know CSS, you will be very familiar with it, but it's much more, less text-like, it's much more um, intuitive and with drag and drop and, and properties. Um, I also want to do some uh, small things in procedural world, uh, L systems and fractals, and of course some performance and workflow optimizations. So I think we got one minute left. Uh, I would like to do a live demo, but I think it's, it's not enough time. So if you want to see a live demo, uh, please uh, speak to me uh, outside. I think after this talk there will be a break. So this is the perfect time. And now, yeah, does anyone have questions? I would like to thank you for your, um, for your um, attendance.